everybody and welcome to today's webinar. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, today's webinar is Insights into Type Design, Typography and Calligraphy. So you may be joining us as a current graphic design student at Arden University. You might be joining us as someone who's interested in coming to study graphic design at Arden University or perhaps someone random who maybe works in the industry or is just interested in finding a little bit more about this topic. Uh, so whoever you are and wherever you are, welcome. Um, my name's Amy, I'm Outreach and Recruitment Officer at Arden University. Um, you mainly won't be hearing from me today, I'll be helping to facilitate some questions a bit later on, but just a couple of housekeeping bits from me before I hand over to uh, the guest speaker. Uh, so first of all, uh, this session is being recorded, so um, you'll get email tomorrow uh, from GoToWebinar with the recording of this session attached if you'd like to go back and watch it at any point. Um, and secondly, as I've just mentioned, this is obviously a great opportunity to ask some questions from to a professional who's working uh, in the industry, so please do send them in via the question and answer or chat tab on GoToWebinar and send them at any point throughout the presentation. I'll pick them all up um, at the end of the session and put them to Nicola. So send them in. Uh, now's your opportunity and uh, yeah, we'll we'll get into it in just a second. I'll just hand over to Cavell, who's also joining us today to introduce herself as well. Hello everybody, my name is Cavallo Trinton, I'm the BA Honours Graphic Design course leader and um, after this programme if you want to get in touch with me and ask me any questions then you can via student support. I'm now going to pass over to Nicola Durek from um, Croatia University. Hello Nicola. Hello, thank you. Uh, hello everybody, so my name is Nicola, I'm from uh, Croatia. I I will shortly, uh, shortly introduce myself. I studied in uh, Zagreb, Croatia, and then in Florence, Italy, and then in uh, in The Hague, Netherlands, in the Royal Academy of Art in Type uh, Media uh, postgraduate course, and finally earned my PhD in also Type Design field. Uh, uh, I'll just for first slides will be just to show you what I. Uh, like working in uh, in professional life. So I'm a teacher at the uh, two universities in Zagreb and Split. I also have my design studio and type foundry together with uh, Johanna and Peter Bilak in the in the Netherlands. It's called Typotech. So uh, you see my name and you see my website. So you know like typotech.com if you need some. Uh, more information about today's lecture or anything else. Uh, so this is uh, our uh, foundry called Typotech. So we are uh, making fonts and selling fonts and we are also really um, in, the, in the field that we want to uh, include in our library uh, most of the known scripts in the world. So from Chinese, Korean, uh, Cyrillic, Arabic, uh, all the Indian scripts, of course, the Latin, uh, Cyrillic, and uh, your, uh, all the other uh, languages with accents. Uh, I'll just show my first few slides will be what I'm doing. So, for example, I did a, a typeface and the design system for the Croatian government. So you can see the samples here. So I, I don't know, uh, you can see my uh, cursor. So the I designed a uh, whole type of his family for the uh, science and serif and make the, all the proposals uh, uh, for the design uh, look of the Croatian government. That was quite a big project at the, at the time. I also, as a young uh, uh, country, how to say, uh, so we, we also need a new license plates. I designed that. Uh, international pitch for that, but this is a kind of political thing, so this is still not implemented. I hope it will be soon. Uh, I also uh, did uh, 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 design and uh, signage system and the uh, typeface system for the main creation uh, uh, 
uh, how to say fairies. So you can see the proposals and that was accepted, but still not implemented fully. And uh, the thing that is going on is the 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 typeface and also the this whole design system for the creation railways. Uh, and the thing that was implemented, this is uh, this is for the Alc Zagreb. Uh, I designed typeface and the system for the road signage, not for the street signage and the, and the house numbers in our. And also in Croatia, when you uh, land in the, on the our main airport in Zagreb, you can see my face. So uh, I also uh, I also did that. But I, uh, I want to my main point of interest is uh, type design. So I'll show you uh, a few type design uh, projects, and so you can see how I work, uh, what motivate me, and how I look deeply in the history of uh, type design, graphic design, and the uh, and the uh, cultural impact on on design uh, overall. So the this uh, uh, type system is called Audrey. So my my idea, I was looking at uh, this is Peter Bilak typeface history, how he combined other layers on typefaces so you can create some effects uh, just using a typeface not really uh, use uh, illustrator effects or or something this is a really typeface that you can uh, use as a layered fonts and also this is matthew carter uh, a work that was also inspiring for me because he used kind of different uh, endings on letters these are not really serifs, it's, it's just different endings and letter. So you can see it's called the, the Walker font. If you, if you don't know, the Matthew Carter is a famous type designer who, who designed the Georgia and, uh, and uh, the Homa most like probably Lucida or famous, not Lucida, the most famous uh, web fonts like in the 90s. So I was looking at the, what's going on with the serifs in, in history. So we have uh, all kind of different serifs in typefaces and non-serif, which we call sans serif, cursive serif. So this was kind of quite interesting for me to see uh, how, how these serifs were used in the past and how they're using today. But most important thing is uh, that uh, in this project was uh, to understand the contrast and the and the construction and the construction of the letters. So this is uh, called, if you don't know, this is called Nordza IQ. Herr Nordza was a re really famous and still is a, a Dutch uh, type designer and teacher. So he uh, invented, let's say, so uh, the system how he classified the fonts uh, based on the con uh, construction. So we have a translation and expansion and the amount of contrast. So we have high contrast and uh, low contrast. So I was trying to, to combine this and with uh, all these uh, different kinds of serifs into one into one typeface, let's say. So, uh, uh, so from the left side, you see the broad nib contrast and from right side, you see the expansion contrast. And you can, if you are familiar with uh, typefaces, you can, uh, from the right side, you can see in bottom line, you can see Helvetica or Bodonio, the top line. On the left side, you can see Gilsans or, or Times New Roman, for example. So this, this is really important to understand the construction of the of the letters. So, and it's easier when you are dealing with the books or newspapers, when you combine the typefaces, so you know which construction you can combine with to be in, the, in let's say, harmony. So you can, this is a short video, uh, what all possibilities are if you're looking at the type of construction and the amount of the contrast. So my idea was how to, how can I combine this principle in my, in my font?
So I started drawing the, the different kinds of serifs, uh, mainly inspired uh, with uh, history, uh, with history like how they using in the Renaissance serif or the or the Baroque serif or the modern serifs. So I, I draw the 15 uh, different kinds of uh, serifs, and I also uh, uh, draw the uh, all the uh, all the letters in two main uh, type of constructions: so expansion and translation. Also, amount of contrast from the left side you can you can see the low contrast letter, and from the right side you can see high contrast letter. So, uh, and they, I want to combine this in all in, all in the one type of family. And I also add some effects so you can see the stencil version, and you can see uh, inline version, and you can see also the inline version with the uh, stencil effect. And when you combine all these factors that I show you, you get a one type family that has uh, 512 uh, styles. So it's a huge type family. This is only half of uh, it showed here. So you can really use it for the complex uh, type project or graphic design project or whatever you, you want. It gives you a lot of possibility, especially in the display uh, use. So you can see it's a one type face, but it can create a lot of different effects. If you see the letter E, you can see the different kind of contrast and the amount of uh, amount of contrast and different kind of uh, construction. Also, if you see just one word, it can be different kinds of serifs. Also, uh, different kinds of effect. So you have one typeface that you can write all these different uh, styles, but like overall approach in design is the same. So you can see it's one author and you can see it's one typeface, but you can have all these possibilities to make it more interesting. And when you stack uh, everything on top of each other, you get uh, something like this. And uh, on our website, you can easily, uh, uh, you have a little web application, so you can choose what serif you want. You can choose a, a construction, you can choose the amount of contrast, and you can se uh, select the effect like style, stencil inline, or normal, and the system will automatically generate this uh, this style for you, and you can buy it or test it or test it online. So it's kind of it is kind of a, a system, but it allows you to make your own choices, and you can download the the font as you uh, set the, these parameters. Uh, there's a short movie about the, uh, this is when this uh, font was published. So it's like one minute movie, but you we kind of want to uh, show the possibilities that this typeface can do. And the company to eat my creep by hitting the clear switch. Large scale systems for island theater now. All tablets that they are the same. Research engineers in laboratories constantly experiment to discover new this equipment quickly supplies the answers to kinetic tape is used to store data required in working out the solution. Mm. Magnetic drum or tape. Another compact journal in the identification room on the large screen. So that the company may know what it stands financially. Is programmed by community and environment. More than two million digits can be recorded on a single reel of tape. This was like a presentation uh, movie for uh, for this uh, font. So it was kind of nice to show it in this way. 
Uh, I just want to show you this sample. That then uh, one factory from from Croatia asked me, can I do the carpet for them in this type three system? So they do they did the manually uh, saw the carpet with with you can see with all these different combination. And now I have this carpet in my in my studio. So it's nice. Uh, you can see this uh, 15 seven different kinds of serifs here. Uh, I'll also uh, go to another project. Project uh, I also quite use uh, uh, let's say pro programming in the type design or uh, playing or with uh, open type features. So you can so fonts can make uh, some things for you that you don't expect when you have just one static font and you just type the letter and you can get one word. But this this uh, gradient projects that I did uh, can do much more for you with just uh, font. So uh, this was the Delbert project uh, inspired uh, by the Art Nouveau uh, typefaces from uh, uh, Croatia. So I designed the FET style. Also, uh, this was the thing that I show you with the amount of contrast. So I used the expansion, point and pen, and the high and low contrast. Uh, so this is a dark style or FET style. You can see how it looks. And then I designed also the thin style. And then my idea was to combine this in uh, in one uh, in one font, but they can make the, this gradient effect for you. So when you type, you can get some uh, effect like this. So this is not uh, Illustrator or some manual uh, uh, manual work. So when you type this typeface, you can get result like this. So you can get a nice typographical illustration or patterns like this. So it can go uh, gradient from left to the right, from right to left, from the uh, middle to the so pin, pin point is in the middle of the uh, text block. And when you type, you, you, you get the effect like this. So this is possible with contextual alternatives set in open type features. Open type features, if you don't know, is a part of the font that they have instruction to say you uh, how the, the some rules of the uh, letters that you design will look on the screen. Also, this when you type, you can so you have inside effect, outside effect left right and you you choose this uh, in the menu or if you're in in design or illustrator or or whatever other uh, application that support uh, open type features so it's nice to play with it and and this font is quite used in some of the uh, display uh, especially in the posters uh, another project uh, with this gradient effect that I that I did is Francis typeface. Uh, I will not explain uh, the whole concept. I will just show you the, this uh, gradient effect. So again, uh, I choose the uh, contrast and uh, and uh, type of uh, expansion. I'm always showing this because I uh, always start the designing using the the pen, so or the broadening pen or the expansion pen, pointed pen. So I always start with the uh, with hand and the paper. So and later when I'm kind of happy with the result, I I go to the uh, digitalizing phase or to or to computer. So this is the styles. This is a diagram that shows the range of the weights. You can see like this uses as normal this is really compressed the headline typeface. But then uh, my uh, it idea uh, as it was it was uh, like to create strong headlines with this typeface. 
So I met a gradient that, that can allow to font to change the uh, width of the each letter of the word that you uh, type on the keyboard. So if you, if you see when you type, it gets uh, uh, from from really narrow to really uh, extended. And again, this is not uh, some effect. That this is a really just install the font on the in application, and font will do this for you. You can see some words how it looks. You can see it in the text of block. It's really um, how to say uh, graphical, almost uh, like an illustration. So I call this uh, outside, inside, left and right effect. You can see uh, in some uh, samples how this typeface look in when you use it or other people use it. This is uh, this uh, one friend from India uh, made this uh, really nice uh, posters and uh, and the animations. And it was really interesting uh, that uh, they used this uh, typeface for the Grammy Awards uh, three years ago. So for uh, when the well, for the titling and the when uh, and the introducing notes, they use this typeface and. And it looks like like this. Uh, another project is called uh, Plotter, where I also use this uh, some effects uh, in the font. Uh, my father was uh, an engineer, uh, so he all, he was drawing also all the time with uh, uh, with pen, rapidograph pen, and use the stencils. So I uh, look at all these his uh, drawings that he made, and I. Uh, digitalize uh, these captions and I made a typeface family that is really for all kinds of effects and the uh, slant version and round and only the straight line version it has a total of uh, 47 fonts but then I want to try something else what can I, else can I do with this, uh, uh, with this typeface so I found this uh, 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 scheme uh, how they use uh, stencils uh, from the that have uh, upright and the slanted on the back and slanted on the right. So I want to use this uh, in typeface that can do automatically for you and the, the result. So the the letters are dancing from the left to the right, uh, and again this is do done uh, uh, automatically, and so you can see. It's kind of really nice for the for the posters. So you can see the inside, or you can see how it's played outside. It has four four kinds of different effects. Uh, another project was a Tremolo project. I'm going sorry, maybe I'm going too fast, but I want to show you a lot of things. So uh, 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 maybe some slides. I'm going too fast, but. Again, you can ask me some questions if if you need on, on specific projects later. So Tremolo project was uh, inspired by the uh, Gutenberg Textura. So you know the the famous Gutenberg Bible that he invented the printing press and all the things. So I used uh, the typeface that was uh, 
Bible setting called Textura. So this is a Textura. And I uh, use I use it as an inspiration for my font. Again, I will not again uh, explain this. So and the result was this like modern looking black letter that was really like warm, not uh, really hard looking as most of the of the black letter fonts. Uh, so you can see how it looks when I finish it. Also have a thin version. This is really nice to make because black letter, as it calls, it's supposed to be black, but uh, it doesn't didn't have the, the light version. So I designed light version and designed the stencil version. And so you can see how how I took something from history and reinvented the like say the textura in my style. So from the left you can see my uh, my design and inspiration is on the right side. That was made. Uh, that was uh, made in uh, in uh, mid uh, mid 15th century. And you can see how it looks in the text block. It has the, exactly the same proportions as uh, the Gutenberg textura, but you can see the, the look is more lively and friendly and looks uh, contemporary. And it had uh, this thin version that I really like. And then also my idea is what can I do else with it? So I, I, uh, you, because on, you always by default you only looking at the black and white when you type the the letters. But now I was trying how how can I uh, break a letter and make it. Uh, in two parts, so you can choose the color or some kind of different effect, but not as an effect from uh, application that could be implemented in the in the font itself. So you can see it has a all this combination that can you so you can you can break the letters. You can choose amount of the this effect uh, from from one color to another color. It could be really rough or really smooth. Uh, and again. Uh, you have we have this uh, web application. Then you can choose amount of amount of the transition of the from the bottom to the, uh, to the uh, up part. And you can when you choose this, and you can say, okay, I like this, and you can download this font, and you can use it normal in applications of your in application of your choice. So this is a kind of hard transition. This is a little bit more smoother and you can have this quite smooth uh, transition and then i make this poster that i on purpose i uh, i like distort it a little bit so different tones and different voices packed in a single design and i also every time i design when i publish uh, typeface i design poster or or type specimen uh or uh, for the for the project, you can uh, see that on type of website and buy it and buy it there also, or you can ask him maybe I can send you. And also, uh, as you see, from most of the projects that we make, it, we always use some kind of the videos that we want to 
uh, show to our users videos like this and also we uh, print uh, type specimens for most most of our work so you can see how it looks in the print Mm -hmm. This is a Gordian project. A Gordian project was inspired again, uh, of course, everything is inspired from history, but not everything, but most of the things. Uh, I looked at the Trian typeface, uh, so like Roman, uh, Roman uh, capitals from the second century. So if you look at the Trian font that everybody has uh, on the computer, I was trying to do sans version and that looks quite contemporary. So I, I call this uh, uh, typeface Gordian and you can see the styles that uh, it has. But uh, again, most fun for me was to make this uh, Gordian knot styles. So you can see how the letters are going above and uh, below the one of each other so you can uh, create a nice effect. So again, this is uh, like what typeface can do uh, for you. So it has, uh, it has, you can go northeast, northwest, so in four directions you can choose which, and then it will create nice uh, uh, typographical effects for you. So as you see, I always try to like really classical uh, text typefaces, serif and sans, but then again, on the other hand, I'll also try to push the limits with my uh, with uh, some uh, ex experiments that can that can make things like this. So you can see the, the it shows you the how uh, each letter can look differently and uh, when you type it. So you can see that it has like normal styles, Roman, light, italic, bold, but it, again, it has all these uh, uh, things that can make the uh, typeface looks uh, differently. This typeface is called Mississippi. Uh, it was in inspired by uh, music, uh, LPs from the 50s uh, from uh, from America uh, and what was interesting to me how how can I change the height of the each letter uh, when I use it when I type uh, on the keyboard so it can create patterns like this so uh, uh, letters are designed so you can go up and down uh, but also when I show all these examples, you must understand that everything was uh, uh, designed uh, manually, how to say. So each master was drawn by hand from the from thin or to the black or from the, the small to the high. Uh, you, of course, you can interpolate the instances, but all the things uh, must be drawn manually if you want to uh, have uh, results like this. So this is, and you must all, all again think that you, this typeface and, and every other that I show you must uh, must uh, be must work in all the languages that we want. Of course, not all of them, but we we are trying to design the uh, most of the typefaces for the Latin, Cyrillic, and Greek, and then we have a, a part of our library that. Uh, that are using Arabic uh, scripts and all the and other scripts in the world from the world. so you can get uh, and again it can be quite powerful as a typeface itself itself and this is the last part of the presentation uh, uh, it, it doesn't have to do with uh, this effect that I show you it uh, has to do with uh, how uh, how region or or political uh, environment can have impact on the on type design and and in the end of the people's life. 
lives. So uh, I'm, I'm from Croatia. We are we are we are part of Slavonic languages, uh, South Slavonic languages, Croatian. Uh, if you see, uh, this is uh, all the uh, uh, Slavonic languages. This marked with red are uh, written in Latin script. Uh, this is Croatian alphabet. Uh, if you see, we have five uh, letters with accents. So this uh, acute and uh, circumflex and Carol's, sorry. So this is a Croatian alphabet. And we have uh, three diagraphs. So L N and G. I will skip this quite fast. Uh, idea was uh, to uh, in part of the Croatia, uh, they are using uh, from the same language they are using the uh, two, two scripts. So they are using both Latin and both Cyrillic script uh, uh, in one region. And this is quite political uh, thing because uh, in Croatia we had uh, in in 90s, uh, so 30 years years ago we had a big war between Croatians and Serbs, and the uh, Serbians were writing in Cyrillic script and Croatian uh, uh, Croats uh, write uh, Latin script. So uh, even till today, uh, there are people are still not happy with this solution that uh, both of the scripts uh, are, uh, must be used in the same region. So this is official uh, uh, government building and it, it's the same text is written in both scripts. But uh, as uh, so uh, people quite not happy with this and you can see this has happened a few years ago because the situation was quite bad and you can see what happened when they put these uh, uh, tables plates on the buildings. <laughs> So you can really see how a uh, thing like script can have a really powerful impact on, on people's life. Of course, the script is not a problem here. It's political political situation, but you can see how it uh, can be reflected uh, as a powerful tool. So they put a lot of uh, policemen to 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 guard this uh, to guard these uh, plates on the buildings. So my idea was, and then uh, in the end they put uh, some creation flag to cover everything, uh, or to cover just the Cyrillic part. So my idea was uh, how can I combine these two uh, scripts into a, a one script. So I made the because it's the same language. I made this. Uh, uh, font called Balkan, so it's a one uh, uh, typeface system that combines two script. So, for example, uh, now it looks like this, and when you use my typeface, it can look like this. So it's a and it's really on top, uh, or it can be the the uh, Latin on top. So you can choose. I designed this with my former student Maria Yuza. Uh, some years ago. So, uh, so how I how we combine two scripts into a one a new script, and it looks uh, result looks like this. Uh, uh, if you need more information, I can always send you this slide. And this is how it looks when you type uh, English text. The Balkans produce more history than they can consume. This was a famous uh, Churchill uh, quote. This is a short movie about this. Balkan stands 
Vulcan is a new typeface system that consists of Latin and Cyrillic scripts. It is based on the study of a phenomenon known as Vulcan Sprachbund, a term used to describe neighboring languages whose sound and grammatical features have merged because of their proximity. The typeface system also represents an attempt to identify the features shared by some South Slavic languages and alphabets like Bosnian, Montenegrin, Croatian, and Serbian. We focused on the dual literacy that characterizes Slavic peoples, many of whom use and transliterate both Latin and Cyrillic alphabets. Historically, there were three scripts in this region, Cyrillic, Latin, and Regalitic. The use of Latin and Cyrillic typifies the former Yugoslavian countries, today Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina as well as Montenegro. Historically, both scripts in this region were bearers of cultural, ethnic, religious and political identities, but their communicative and symbolic function often are of step just for the sake of multi-ethnicity. On the other hand, close development of languages and scripts throughout history resulted in shared properties. Today, some regional languages in the Western Balkans are so similar that they can even be thought of as dialects. The Balkan typeface in a series of codes it demystifies, that politicizes and reconciles them for the sake of education, tolerance, and, above all, communication. The Balkan is a font in the usual sense. It can also be used to translate Croatian Latin into Serbian or vice versa. One could therefore think of the fonts as the educational software capable of reconciling discrete scripts. Like all open type fonts, Balkan can be expanded to include the Russian, Macedonian, and Bulgarian alphabets. Balkan song and Balkan song stencil consist of four styles. Three of them have different alignments. For example, all uppercase characters are Latin and lowercase characters are Cyrillic, and one style consists of uppercase Cyrillic and lowercase Latin characters. Balkan Sons deals with the concepts of transcending cultural barriers to often educational software which promotes new ways of understanding and using topography and typeface design. In 2012, Balkan Type System received the Type Directors Club Certificate of Excellence in Type Design. And you can see how it's used the book or the newspapers. Again, the book cover, the type specimen book that was designed by me, some authors, again, some newspaper and the, and the poster. Okay, this is, uh, um, we are running out of time. This is my last slide. Uh, uh, so if you have some questions or other things, whatever I can ask you, we have also have book about this uh, Balkan projects also in English uh, about this contrast uh, and the type of contrast. Um, I have also written book with uh, uh, Frank Blockland and the uh, Balkan specimen uh, also in, written in, in English. Okay, this is uh, all for me for this session, so if you have questions, please ask. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I would like to say thank you very much, Nicola, for such a fabulously rich presentation that was really, really um, fantastic and really informative. So we're very grateful for your input today. It's been really good. Um, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. I actually like to ask you many questions, but to start with, I would like to ask you, um, what actually drew you to typography in the first place? Uh, it was uh, uh, as a, as I mentioned, my father was uh, had an architectural studio. He was an engineer, and I was uh, 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 working with helping with him in the studio. And I was always drawing some um, letters or things like this. And I, when I look at his stencils, I was uh, like when I was young, I was doing this, and I quite like it. And also, I started to go to and I finished. Uh, 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 civil uh, uh, engineering university before I went to the art academy. So this kind of combination of architecture and e engineering and uh, and uh, writing letters was really inspiring to me. And that's and then I started to design the uh, I don't know, posters and flyers for the local bars and I didn't have any fonts so I I drew it by myself and then uh, that's how I. Uh, 
start to be in love with uh, typography and type design and then i was looking it wasn't uh, in croatia we didn't have any schools for the typography calligraphy or type design so i went to italy and then to holland and uh, yeah and then that's my life with uh, the letters i also do the other things i write write books make graphic design i also have a, a little uh, brewery and one yard here but like type design is my main uh, type design and teaching is my main point of interest interest is there a particular passion project in typography that you would like to do that you haven't yet done uh uh yeah that's an interesting question because i always like i always think that the current project is current project is most most interesting so at the moment i'm uh, doing one the one research uh from the really old uh, uh book from Enschedo type uh, foundry which i find amazing so uh, this my at the moment this is not my passion uh, uh for this uh, probably next few years but uh, uh if you see my balkan was a really nice thing to do uh i i, I really wanted this uh, license uh, uh plate uh, for the cars and uh, and uh, and bus and uh, motorcycles to go on but i'm not sure this will happen because of the political situation but yeah i really like that uh, the the airport is using my typeface that's main uh, uh, main capital is using my typeface also my local town so yeah i I'll, yeah i always try to find the, something that it's kind of didn't it's missing uh, in the in the uh in the world around me so i can do something with something for it yeah from the projects that you've shown us today the breadth and reach of your typography work is just it's quite immense really for, for such a for such a short life so far i mean you've got so much more ahead of you to do yeah, and this, and i only showed the this uh, gradient things i have i didn't show you like my typeface uh, things and my newspaper typeface yeah so it's quite we have quite a lot of things going on and the, at the moment, with my partner Peter and me, uh, uh, we are working on probably five projects at the same time. So it's all 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 the time is very like intense and 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 interesting. Yeah, I really love the tremolo and the gradients. I really love that. That was great. And they um, actually, I loved all of them. Let's face it. Um, well, how do you think um, for an entry level um, kind of like graphic designer, would you give them any kind of like advice on how they could get into typography or start typography? Because it seems like something that's you know it's very bespoke, and it's also immense at the same time. Yeah. Uh, for example, with uh, with my first year students, we always start with uh, uh, calligraphy. So we always start with the pen, uh, with Brodnik pen writing, and but at the same time they have a, 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 like tasks to do uh, normal typography, like composition, uh, setting the the like uh, uh, page of the book or title for the book. So they're making parallel things. They start to make writing with uh, calligraphy pens and start to do designing with. Uh, with, uh, you know, with for example in indesign but then at, uh, after first year we, we are trying to combine these two things so they can start to use their own fonts for example not for text but maybe just for captions and the, and when they come to the like third year they like quite capable capable to design some kind of uh, let's say semi-professional uh, typeface that they can use in some way but for me, we always, as a start point, uh, I think because I was taught like that, uh, that calligraphy and hand is like probably the best way to learn the, uh, the amount of the space around letters, proportion of the letters, and also also to to look uh, what was happened before and what can you improve for the future. Mm -hmm. Are there any um, particular don'ts that you would advise for like designing a typeface? Because you know sometimes students or, or generally some people who are trying to sell work on the market go really extreme and add like points or peaks or things. Yeah, uh, it's always uh, like this because uh, also when you see these gradient projects, they are quite because they are uh, they are quite extreme and then the the tendency is they will not last that long. 
So because if you use it for two projects, it hard, it's hard to use the, the kind of the typefaces or the systems again it, because it, it, it's worn out quite quite uh, quite quickly. So for example, if you use Look Futura, which is uh, 100 years old, it can st still look fresh today. So also like uh, some typeface from the from the Renaissance can, can can look quite fresh today. But some typeface, for example, if you look uh, Tremolo Gradient project, if you use it for two projects, it's it, you can you, you kind of okay. I use it for for, for these things and and I'm done with it. And I'm quite uh, I understand that and it's fine with me. But that's why I also show you that there's another they can use it maybe without these effects and it, then it can be fresh and you can use it for for longer time. So you would advise um, people who are generating bodies of funds to kind of remain in a more consistent format rather than going to like really broad extremes, for example. Well, I, I always uh, uh, try to push my students to the extremes, but then at the end we are always narrow the thing, things down because, but it's always too good for you to uh, to work on the extreme masters uh, of the both of design and and maybe and the for if you look at the type design world uh, to, from the thinnest to the blackest and to the more, most playful to the most rigid solution and then you can narrow it down and make decisions that can that can kind of last uh, and be more uh, reasonable thing to have in the font not just to express some uh, weird uh, design decisions that are usually uh, not weird that are usually bad okay so illegibility basically yeah. yes but uh, but it, it's uh, i'm trying not to uh, uh, sound too too rigid because the uh, illegibility it can also be a good thing if you can control it and for the some uh, for the some uh, purpose but not uh, just to have it as a as a as a final option yeah i think that's maybe an area where the students tend to not distinguish between something that's beautiful and something that's functional and then that kind of fine line between being functional and beautiful at the same time and being kind of yeah. diverse and dynamic so yeah exactly um is there a particular font that you have as a favorite your own favorite from for my library from oh, any any font in the world any font i don't know i was quite impressed with the um uh, with the dutch typeface scene uh so I, from the like uh, late 19th century uh, because probably most of them were my teachers like Herod Nordzai or before and uh, after him uh, before him Jan, uh, Jan von Krimpen and Bram de Dus but I, I, I have hard to say I'm impressed also with my with Peter Bilak works that is he's my partner at Typotech uh, but yeah it's hard to just pick one font because the, the, there are so many nice things that are that are around so from my colleagues and from so I I will hard to it, it probably is best to say uh, if you have some project that maybe this font is best for this project so that because if I like some font it's maybe not good for the newspapers that I'm designing at the time so yeah, yeah. hard to say just to pick one and you um, differentiate your job or your role rather as a typographic designer and a graphic designer. Could you just speak a little bit about that? Yeah, it's it. Uh, if when people ask me to do some graphic design projects, I tend to force them uh, if you can always do or new typeface or or we can change something or in existing typeface that I design or 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 Peter design. So I it, I try to com, uh, really combine these two things. So uh, if you see this graphic uh, projects that I shown, it's it always started as a as a new uh, as a new type design thing, and then it built and then I built it on top of it uh, or visual identity or I don't know license plates or the identity for the government. So I try to really combine. Uh, new type design or something to 
to uh, change in existing type uh, in all the my graphic design projects. So of course, that... sometimes you don't have time to design typeface because to design uh, to design typeface it can take from up to few years. So for some projects, I just use existing fonts. But when it's big projects, I, big project, I try to always uh, start with new typeface. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. If you get to yeah. make a typeface every time for every single project, yeah, no, you no, 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 no. Uh, but for some project, maybe it's just one word. For that, just a titling font, you can make quite quickly, and you can use use for the text or body text. So you can use some that was already designed. But yeah. So you can do this quite quickly, just to, or or some just uh, uh, cap letters. But I, oh, every every time I try to do something new with with uh, with font. Okay, thank you very much for those responses. Um, well, I think that draws us almost to a close now because we're coming up to three o'clock. Um, that's been immensely helpful. We've appreciated every single thing you've had to say today. I'm pretty sure the students are going to go off and have a look at every single thing that you've you've told them today. Um, okay. Did you want to say anything, Amy? Yeah, so we've just um, we've had a question come through from Mina. How do you decide on prices for the licenses to use the typography you create? Uh, it was uh, really uh, uh, like this was most uh, uh, people in Croatia uh, know me uh, mostly of uh, I'm not non-design people let's say know me know me about this project because it was really big thing in Croatia uh, because I changed the complete uh, 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 look of the license place because we have the national crest on the on the license plate plate and i didn't like that because it's not place to put a heraldic uh, thing on the license plate and when i uh, took it out and, and put new kind of really uh reduct reducted uh, symbol which designed it together with my friend uh, damir braovic and boris lubicic luka and, and andrea uh, and then we won the pitch and everybody was happy but then the right uh, we had the right uh, wing government at the time and they were really against it and it was like I was fighting with them for uh, one year and then at the end I I just uh, I, I, I told them I will not do that anymore and then I quit and took all my all my designs uh, and uh, it's yeah it didn't went through as I wanted yeah but uh, at one point I just stopped not, not, not because I quit, it, it, it because it didn't make sense to fight anymore. I, it took just too much en energy for me. So maybe if something changes in the future, I'm, I'm for it, but at the moment, uh, I don't, I'm not sure it will go on. Thank you. Um, and then we've just got um, a message from Alessandra to say thank you very much for the presentation. Um, they loved Balkan Sands and oh, a question has literally just come through. Jake, we'll, we'll try and get this uh, answered as quick as possible. Does the typeface change much from pen to digital or is it just a case of refining um, any drastic changes in any designs? Uh, it's, uh, if I understand the, uh, correctly the question, uh, I maybe when i was younger i i was like doing the most of the thing of quite detail on the paper and so it looks almost the same when i digitalize it but now when i have more experience like quite basic uh, sketches are enough uh, on the paper and then i then i tune it and and make it uh, uh, in my style in, on 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 screen that question, another question, sorry, just to interject. Yeah. When you draw on paper for someone else, you then do that with a greater set of detailed um, inputs, I imagine? Yeah, I, I yeah. try to do uh, like most detail as I can. So it's only for yourself that it gets like, you know, you just do something quickly and then you do it on the screen. That's when yeah. it kind of happens. Well, like it's, uh, it's also depends if, 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 if you, if I like designing the, like let's say uh, sans grotesque uh, modernistic uh, typeface that I practically need really rough sketch sketches uh, on the paper and then go to the screen. But if I want to design like a cali like calligraphic uh, 
uh, swashes or, or, or lettering, then most of the things I do, do it on the paper. Or now I start to also try to do it also with the uh, Apple Pencil on iPad, which is not that uh, interesting, interested, but interesting, but uh, it's quite faster than on paper. Because on paper you have to need to prepare the ink and the environment, and so it's it, now it's, with iPad is quicker, but not that nice. Yeah, the pen points are, are not as um, refined, are they? So you don't have a contact point. But for quick sketch, it's, it's it's okay. Yeah, they both work for different purposes, so it's, it's yeah, just as good. Course. Do we have any other questions, Amy? No, that's it. So um, I think we'll draw the webinar to a close there. Um, so thank you very much to everyone for joining us today. And thank you very much to Cabell for helping put it on. And for Nicola, obviously, for, for sharing his insights on, on these really interesting topics. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Nicola. Have a lovely day, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye. -bye. Bye.